Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I'm Jeff Allison and thank you for watching. We may have to try a few different camera angles here today, but what I spent most of yesterday on was filling the hole that we'd cut through the firewall for the uh, high pressure fuel pump. So we've got it set back uh, an inch and an eighth. Um, everything's been welded from the inside and in a few places from the outside as well. But uh, um, I just got to finish, finish grinding all these welds. I still need to weld the top seam across here. And I think, oh, and the bottom seam on this side. Um, but it's close. There's a little bit of finished grinding in there to do. And then that's all set up for the, uh, for the LT. Um, and then I've got a place here where there were some rust holes from way back. And what I'm going to do is make a piece that comes in, follows this lip right here, then follows this edge, basically the tape line there. I'm going to fill this whole pocket flat and then, you know, cut that off or uh, cut that out from the inside. But um, we're going to build a plate for that today. And then I've got a little bit more work right here. I've got to get this bolt hole and the bracket holes in there. all installed. This for the thing. all installed and do a little bit of trim work here to finish up. I need to build my windshield wiper bracket uh, mount, and I need to do some fills down here on this end. So, um, quite a bit of work for today, but that's the goal. First thing we have to decide is just exactly where we want this. And so, what I'm thinking is, I want, we don't need this round hole anymore. So, I could, this is a nice smooth panel over here, and I could shave this off. There's a little rib there that I like. Well, that adds strength more than anything. Um, so I could shave that off. That would let me fill the hole. And then what I'm thinking is I could bring... That's where this whole gap gets filled in all the way across. So basically following this plane all the way across so that I would weld in there, come up, now it's just hard to, hard to see exactly where it would be. Just about touches over here. It does touch. When you come down this way, this is set in at a little bit of an angle towards the bottom. So if I try to follow that, this little circle, one patch, and the other patch would start on that line, come out, and that would re retain this plane that I'm already working on. So I would cut it here, and here, and somewhere right in there. Cut this side. Almost to my corner, and then go ahead and cut all the way up to here, and then where it comes down here, then it would have a turn in, and it would just weld down here somewhere. 
So I think that's the plan. Let's see if we can make us a pattern. We're doing a little cat design here. It's not necessarily a cut line, that's just so I can line up the pattern over and over. Maybe over. Let's start with that. Keep trimming, don't take off a lot at once. If you overdo it, it's no big deal, you just take a little bit of tape. Again, I, I have not messed with this edge at all, even though I know this is going to be closer down here than it is up here on this line that I drew. This is how I keep realigning everything until I get some other sides where I'm happy with them. Once I get these sides where I'm happy, I'll make some new reference marks, and then I can come back in and trim the pattern for that quarter or three-eighths of an inch that I need to take off. But for now, it's just reference. So it's still a little bit wide right there. That's actually good. It's a little long right up in there. It's pretty good in a lot of places here already. Take a little more off right there. And take a little off from there. gap right there in that corner. And this side is coming up a little too high. So I need to come in, in here just a little bit lower, not much. So we want to we want to tie in almost to that peak. Actually let me leave that. Just leave that and when I cut this, just push that corner out a little bit. I think that would be better. Then I need a reference line. Then needs to take place. seeing as this needs to come this way just a little bit. Back about a quarter. Let's just 
stab it half the inch and come back and trim it. What I did is I want to add a half inch along this side because it comes into this gap here and I'm going to round that off as it comes around that corner. What I'm going to do is take a piece of tape Dent here, I'm going to knock that dent out from the inside. I'm going to let that tie in a little bit. That's that corner that I drew on there. Take that off and see how that happens. No, that's real nice. It's in the real nice, the only place that I have. Let me see. reference marks. We could take maybe an eighth of an inch around the top there. said when I pull this, I've got that gap, and I cut that, I'll get these all tacked in, and then I'll push that corner from the inside, I'll tap it in where it touches so that this piece can stay flat. All across the bottom looks real good, and that corner off. I think that's it. I think I'm happy with it. Trim that up and make one out of metal. So I'm using a piece of 16 gauge sheet metal here. And one of the things that uh, when I'm making these patterns, I always try and make it just slightly smaller than the hole it's going into so that you can flush that metal out. If the metal is, is if you go a little too, if you go just even an eighth of an inch too big, then you're kind of sticking up higher. You're sit, you want it kind of to sit into the recess in this case. Um, show you that a little more when I do the metal because now we'll cut this out. This will be my, my fold line, my bend line. And then once we get it up on the car again, We'll have to start, you know, we'll kind of have to come in with a sander and just kind of sand edges and to, to fine tune it more than we can with cardboard because this is rigid, whereas the cardboard will let you flex it a little bit, um, you know, so it's easy to fool yourself into thinking something fits a little better than it maybe does. So let's get this cut out. And I'm just going to use my uh, cutoff wheel.
Set that up and see how it fits now. Bring you in a little closer. All right. Bring in a couple of magnets. So, what we've also got though is the, the panel, the, the firewall comes down and right about in this point, it starts to roll that way. So we really need, rather than pull anything out, we need to, right in here, right in here, so something like that, we need to put just a, a real slight bend in it that way, and then we need to roll this that way. And then this piece, from there to there, that can just get brought out a little bit and that'll make a nice smooth transition. Let me put this in my brake. I'll be right back. I overdid it on this top. Just in there like it was going to... That small area just doesn't take that much force before I realized what I've done. I've bent it too far. So, straighten that out. Just a tiny more, more bend in that, just, just a degree or two. And then what we do is clean all this up. Lay a pattern back in there, put the magnets in place, trace it, and it'll cut to the inside of it just a little ways. Thank you. 
that finish. Well, we need a different pin. You guys can see that line. So what we're going to do is now we're going to come in and cut just about a quarter of an inch inside that. And what that will let me do, like a lap, well it will be a lap boat. tack it from the outside, get it in place, then go inside, tap it with a hammer, and bring all that metal up tight to this 16 gauge. And then I have a nice finish, and then I can, I'll end up finish welding this from the outside just so that it can be ground smooth, but then the inside can be tacked in just for strength, and I don't have to worry about if I grind too much of my weld away. Now, the back is also clean, so one shot we got everything we need.
fork, so I started out three inch roll locks and like three inch backing guys. The backing guys get worn down all the time. And then uh, of course the discs get worn down. As well. So I always start with three inch and then I have different uh, different uh, air tools too, but I've as these rubber pads wear down, I'll, I'll go ahead and shave them down, let them get down to about two inch, and then I start using the others. And so I try and keep multiple tools around in different sizes, but you throw these things away just because they get worn down part way. You can clean them up real quick and and uh, use them on a two inch, and I have some all the way down to one inch. So. There you have it, guys. Patterned it, fit it. It's all there. I'll make that one next. You guys have a great day. Hope that uh, hope you learned something from that one. And uh, CAD Pro Group, CAD Design, which is what cardboard aided design. See you next time. Thanks for watching Allison Customs Project Car TV. Like us on Facebook and check us out at allisoncustomsonline.com.